funky monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, the Ghostbusters reboot has been and gone, and much has been said, debated, and counterclaimed online. My verdict? Check out the podcast at the link below. Yep, it's there. But for now, let us return to a happier time, as the 1990s dawned, and a peaceful world seemed to be incoming. But history can only sleep for so long, and even the dead are prone to waking in the long night of eternity. All of which pontificating brings us to today's subject. Ghostbusters 2. Released in 1989, Ghostbusters 2 picks up the story several years later, as a new threat prepares to arise, and once again, Dana Barrett is involved. Receiving somewhat mixed reviews, this movie is ripe for reappraisal in the wake of the franchise reboot. But we won't go on about that. What we will do is once again suit up, strap on our proton packs, and prepare to witness the miracle of mood slime along with the original Busters in Ghostbusters 2. It's five years later, and New Yorker Dana Barrett is a single mother. But her baby carriage suddenly develops a mind of its own. Normal enough, if one lived on a hill. Not so much considering that, to my knowledge at least, the streets of New York City are considerably flatter than a pancake. Dana takes her concerns to Egon. And at Dana's day job, we meet our villain, Vigo the Carpathian. Yes, it's a painting. And if you'd had as much trouble with supernatural portal artworks as I had, you'd be twitching reflexively too. Egon stops by Ray's bookshop, but when Venkman shows up, he has ways of making Ray talk. And so our heroes arrive at Dana and Son's new apartment, but the real action is out where the buggy stopped. Our heroes drill down and discover a river of slime. Underground operations. Oh, my, my, my. I have one, two, and three shot stories. Hell, I've even got a five shot story if you're feeling bold enough. Our heroes are hauled up before the dock. But the hostile judge's ire releases two of his former victims. <laughs> and, while it is under duress, our heroes are duly exonerated and go straight back to work. Now, while this scene does echo the original hotel bust, where they first captured Slimer, it's a great reintroduction to the proton packs, and a good showcase for the upgraded effects, at least in my opinion. After a triumphant montage, a dalliance with mood slime, Baby. and another look at the Prince of Carpathia, the plot reappears when mood slime begins running through Dana's pipes. Of course, this would have been an easy shot to do in CG. But at this point, Terminator 2 was still three years away, and computer-generated effects were still prohibitively expensive. In fact, this entire movie is a testament to the power of pre-CG. Gotta give it up for practical. Dana runs to Venkman's apartment, and next morning, our heroes investigate Vigo. Ah, Vigo von Homburg Deutschendorf. Scourge of Carpathia, Sorrow of Moldavia, Tyrant, Sorcerer, and all-around bad dude. Executed at the ripe old age of 105. Shot, 
stabbed, poisoned, hung, drawn, and quartered, and his head still survived long enough to swear that he would return. That's not something you see every day. And after the developed photos show their true power. What? Yeah, it's a hazard of spirit photography. But film is a necessary evil. I mean, digital's completely unsuitable. Corrupted files, digital curses, and of course the ever-present threat of the Slender Man. No, nope. if you want good quality spirit photography, it's gotta be old school film. Our heroes, Les Venkman, head back to the sewers. And what is the good Dr. Venkman up to that is so important? Why, he's putting the moves on Dana Barrett. The more things change, eh? Which leads to an eventful evening for our trio. <laughs> and a shocking realisation. Now then, this mood slime actually represents the sum total of late 80s New York City's rudeness and disunity. Lindsay Ellis no longer lives in New York City, so was unavailable for comment. Unfortunately, the authorities are not convinced. Oh, I'm back. What's gonna come back? This city's in danger! With the busters out of the way, Vigo makes his move on Oscar. Dana heads to the museum to recover her son, which goes about as well as you'd expect. Luckily, the mayor finally sees sense, and all it took was a pending apocalypse. <laughs> if only everyone was as reasonable. And our heroes are back in business. But how do you break through a protective layer of mood slime? Something that appeals to the best in each and every one of us. How about with the help of Lady Liberty? It's all the distraction Dana needs. Our heroes make ready to kick Carpathian butt. But Vigo won't be denied. Of course, it is New Year's Eve. And as Vigo takes a cup of kind regret, the Busters send him packing. And so our movie ends with an all new painting. So that was Ghostbusters 2. And you know what? I'm gonna put this one into my house of love. This is another great adventure for our heroes. And there really is something for everyone. The romance of Pete and Dana, the comedy snarker that is Dr. Peter Venkman, the action adventure underneath New York, and even a touch of un-PC humour with a comedy foreigner. Director Ivan Reitman wisely seems to step back and let these characters breathe. Aykroyd's Ray Stance, ever the wide-eyed optimist, Bill Murray's Peter Venkman, THE quintessential deadpan snarker, Harold Ramis's Egon Spengler, the no-nonsense scientist, Ernie Hudson's still underused Winston Zedmore, who at least gets a share of the lines this outing. Not to mention Sigourney Weaver's Dana Barrett, who seems to bond so naturally with the babies. Yes, they use twins. And of course, Annie Potts and Rick Moranis rounding out the cast, even though Janine's new look was clearly influenced by the animated show. The flow of the movie necessarily cuts between the twin stories of Dana Barrett's paranormal happenings and the rise of the ghost-related incidents linked to the mood slime, but it never feels episodic or disjointed. This movie does flow, not least on the personalities of its leads. And much as this is an effects-based movie, and the effects are very much pre-CG, they still manage to convey their intentions. And I'm sure that American viewers will love the moment when Lady Liberty herself steps off her plinth to convey our heroes to the finale. But is it just more of the same? Possibly. There's something strange going on in NYC, and it's up to our heroes to stop it. But this is no bad thing, as perhaps the touch of Originitis kept Ghostbusters 1 from firing on all cylinders until the first bust. But this time, the movie hits the ground running and keeps going to the finish. So is it a perfect movie? 
No. I'm sure someone out there will flat out hate the Eastern European caricature that is Peter McNichol's Janosch Pohar. And the premise that the authorities sued the Busters to Helen back for property damage seems ingrateful and vindictive to me. But these are minor flaws in a shining sequel that's easily the equal of its forebear. In summary then, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if you're looking for a double bill movie night for the whole family, who you gonna call? I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days and great entertainment. And hey, don't have nightmares.